Welcome to online worship with Monumental United Methodist Church in Old Town Portsmouth. My name is Celeste Heath and I'm the pastor at Monumental. Today our worship is at Roger Brown's Restaurant and Sports Bar. On Sunday we are worshiping at Court Street Baptist Church as part of our annual worship exchange. We're happy to be back at Court Street after missing it for the last two years because of COVID. So today we're taking our online worship outside the doors of the church and into Old Town Portsmouth and into the community. We welcome all who are worshiping with us online. We're honored that you chose to worship with Monumental today. In our worship today, we draw attention to our Christian command to show hospitality to the stranger. This call to hospitality is part of everything we do in the church, yet sometimes it's neglected. May our worship today remind us to be faithful to, the, to loving the stranger as God has loved us. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship and receive the blessings of our loving and merciful God. Our scripture lessons today come from the book of Hebrews, Paul's letter to the Romans, and from Luke's gospel. Hear now the words of God from Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, that some have entertained angels without knowing it. And from Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 13. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. And from the Gospel according to Luke chapter 14, verses 7 through 11. <clears throat> when Jesus noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you're invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you who has been invited by the host and the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place and then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you're invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt in themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, be with us this day as we learn of your hospitality, that we are called to love the stranger as you have loved us. Christ's name we pray. Amen. We're at Roger Brown's restaurant in Old Town. Roger Brown's is one of the cornerstones in the culture of this community. As a successful restaurant, they strive to meet the needs of their guests by providing meaningful hospitality. If you look around, there are several areas that serve different needs to, of their guests. There's a stage for live music. And another section has many televisions for the, that's perfect for the sports enthusiast. There's a room for private parties, a room for guests who want a smaller area for dining, which is where I am now, and even an outside area for dining al fresco. The bar area has a cozy feeling of being like at Cheers, where everybody knows your name. The menu is varied and has something for every guest who enters the door. Roger Brown's hospitality seeks to meet the needs of their guests. Our scripture readings from Hebrews, Romans, and Luke all focus on hospitality. There are many references to hospitality in the Bible starting in the Old Testament. Hospitality is a running theme throughout God's story with the Hebrew people. The Greek word for hospitality literally means love the stranger. It is vaguely related to our understanding of Southern hospitality. Southern hospitality usually refers 
to how we welcome our friends and our neighbors to our homes or parties or even to church. We want to be friendly and open and make sure our guest has a nice cold drink and perhaps a tasty treat. This is lovely entertaining for our friends, family, and neighbors. However, it is not the same as Christian hospitality to which we are called. Hospitality is one of the fundamental characteristics of the Christian lifestyle. It is not simply a good deed a Christian ought to do, but rather an act of obedience to God's commandment to love your neighbor as yourself. Remember, in the Greek language, which is the language of the New Testament, the word for hospitality literally means love of strangers. Bible verses about hospitality in the Old Testament contain many instructions for God's people to be hospitable to those who are on the road or otherwise in need of a place to stay. In Hebrews 13 we read, Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by so doing some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. When we remember the story of the Good Samaritan, we hear Jesus respond to the lawyer who asks, Who is my neighbor? Jesus commends the Samaritan as the neighbor and the one who loves the stranger in need. Two good church folks passed on the other side from the injured man. But the Samaritan, the one who loved the stranger, stopped to help and offer healing. If we look at the word hospitality, we also see the word hospital. A hospital is a place where people go to be restored to health, to be cared for, to receive food and shelter and welcome. The Samaritan took the injured man to a place to be restored to health, like the hospital. The Samaritan paid for his care and promised to pay more if the care exceeded what he already paid for the injured man's care. The Samaritan showed hospitality love for the stranger. There is real, deep, spiritual purpose behind our Christian hospitality. The number one reason Christian hospitality matters is because it puts on display the character of God. God loves hospitality. God is a hospitable God. First, in creating humanity, God gave us an amazing environment in which to grow and develop. God gave us everything we could need. In church growth discussions and in church growth trainings, hospitality is always the first and primary focus of how churches can succeed in their mission to make disciples for the transformation of the world. That's the mission of the United Methodist Church, to make disciples for the transformation of the world. And I believe it is a mission that is relevant to all churches. We're called to lead others to know the grace and the love of God through Jesus Christ so that our world can be transformed and that God's will is done on earth as in heaven. Often churches like to believe that they are a friendly church and often that is true. Sometimes it's not true. People believe they are friendly, but they are friendly to each other and not necessarily to the guests who come to their church. There are many studies on this, but that's for another sermon. If you notice though, being friendly is not mentioned as a characteristic of being hospitable. Friendliness is not part of the definition of hospitality. Hospitality is loving the stranger. And when we love the stranger, we often have to give up something we want, a part of ourselves. We have to stretch our comfort zone. I'm sure the Good Samaritan had many things on his to-do list as he walked that road and came upon the injured man. Helping someone who was bloody and dying was not part of his plan for the day, and he obviously didn't have the skills to actually help the man himself. The Samaritan took the dying man to someone who could help him. The compassion and love of the Samaritan took him out of his comfort zone and his plan for the day and probably made him late for returning home to his family. The Samaritan didn't say, well, what about me and my family and my plans for the day? 
I don't want to give up what I like to do and, and want for the healing of someone else. And that's often how our churches react when we realize that in order to grow and meet the needs of the community around us, we may have to give up something that is important to us. We may have to change what we've been used to or change our expectations. For, two, for our two churches, the Old Town community is our mission field. How well do we know our community? What are the needs of our community? And who are the people who live here? And what do they need? And where do our gifts meet the needs of those around us? Growing, reaching out to our neighbors who live and work in Old Town may mean changing how we have become accustomed to being the church. It's very uncomfortable and it assaults our traditions and the things we love. It challenges us to love God and God's people more than our buildings, more than our traditions, and more than the way we have always done it. But that's Christian hospitality. I have a friend who used to work for the Ritz-Carlton in Washington, D.C. The, Ritz, the Ritz-Carlton credo about hospitality says, the Ritz-Carlton is a place where the genuine care and comfort of our guests is our highest priority. We pledge to provide the finest personal service and facilities for our guests who will always enjoy a warm, relaxed, yet refined ambience. The Ritz-Carlton experience enlivens the senses, it instills well-being, and fulfills even the unexpressed wishes and needs of our guests. Their steps of service include a warm and sincere greeting, using the guest's name, and anticipating their guest's needs before they even ask. They're even intentional about bidding a fond farewell as their guests leave. Isidore Sharp and Horst Schultz CEOs of the Four Seasons and the Ritz-Carlton Hotels spoke about how the success of their luxury hotels depended on their people. The people at the hotels were the ones the guests encountered most. The employees who are able and willing to respond on their own to their guests are what makes the hotel a special place of hospitality. They warmly convey their core values and convey mutual respect with an attitude of kindness. The CEOs look for character and kindness in their employees. The Four Seasons uses the biblical credo of do unto others as you would have them do unto you, what we know is the golden rule. And they anticipate the need of each guest. When we apply these concepts and beliefs to the work of the church, we realize that Christian hospitality is the responsibility of each person. Each church member is a hand and voice of God in showing hospitality to a guest in our midst. Each person is to extend the warmth and caring of God and anticipate their needs. So many of us have been part of the church for so long, we have forgotten, or maybe we never even knew, the courage it takes to walk into a church as a stranger. For some people, it takes a lot of strength to bring themselves into a place that seems strange and foreign. So many people in our community have never attended a church, and this experience may seem way out of their comfort zone. It is our job to invite them, to make them feel welcome, and to anticipate their anxiety and their fear. It is our job to comfort them and invite them to be at home, even if it feels foreign. The Broadway musical, Come From Away, is about the hospitality of Gander, Newfoundland, on the day of 9-11 and the days immediately following. The town opened its homes and its hearts to the people who were on airplanes that were diverted and had to land at the closest airport following the attacks on the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and the crash of the jet in Pennsylvania. The people of Gander loved the strangers who found themselves in a strange land and place with nowhere to go. Fogo Island, also in Newfoundland, has also become a place known 
for hospitality. This fishing village was on the brink of extinction when the fishing industry was almost destroyed because of manufacturing and large industrial fishing ships. One of Fogo Island's former citizens, Zita Cobb, wanted to save her beloved village. She became the third highest paid female CEO in the country after leaving Fogo Island as a child. But then she gave up her position and went back to her fishing village and built a luxury hotel. Zita knew that the gift of her community was hospitality. She took the literal definition of hospitality, the love of a stranger, created and designed her mission for the hotel based on the gifts of her community. Fogo Island loves what they call shed parties, where music and food and dancing are shared with all guests who come to the village. Each guest receives a welcome that is personally sung to them. Fogo Island has recovered part of its fishing industry, but has added something new and different to the life of their village with the addition of this luxury hotel. Fogo Island is now thriving and welcoming strangers to be a part of their community. The people of this small village love the strangers through sharing music, food, dance, and genuine friendship. Anyone who has ever been to Disney World knows that it's the happiest place on earth because of its excellent hospitality. They know how to greet and meet the needs of their guests. One of the best known Disney movies is Beauty and the Beast. The most endearing scene of the movie is when the kitchen items like the dishes and the forks and knives and spoons and salt and pepper shakers, they come to life inviting Belle to enjoy their hospitality. They sing the inviting song, Be Our Guest. Be Our Guest, Be Our Guest, Put Our Service to the Test. The main character, Lumiere, the candlestick, says, It is with deepest pride and pleasure that we welcome you tonight, and now we invite you to relax. Hospitality and this focus on meeting the needs of the guests came to life in Disney World's Be Our Guest restaurant. Our churches, the people of God, are put to the test some some, whenever someone new comes into our doors seeking to have an experience with God. Are we prepared to answer that test, to offer Christian hospitality, to love the stranger, to find pleasure in meeting the needs of those searching for the healing presence of God. May our hearts be ready to love the stranger and show Chris Christian hospitality as we greet each person with hearts that express, be our guest. Be our guest. Come into the house of God where we offer the healing and transforming love and grace of God through the saving acts of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. God of loved ones, you know better than we know ourselves. You are also the God of strangers, including the stranger within us that we have yet to fully love. Yet making peace with others starts with making peace with what's inside of us. We acknowledge that we're judgmental because it's easier than holding our tongues in the midst of like-minded persons. We admit that it is far easier to be angry at them, whomever they are, than to admit that we might bear some fault or blame. We confess that we pretend to know so much more than we do, and it's easier to exude false confidence than it is to admit that we don't know. Forgive us and help us to be open to knowing ourselves as you know us. Good but not perfect, redeemed even with our faults and well loved. Help us to extend the welcome and forgiveness and compassion to ourselves so that we might then reach out with hospitality to others, to the humans that you have made in your image and to the other living inhabitants of the world which you have made as well. May we learn to share the earth's resources equitably and gently, because this is the creation that you find very good. 
May we learn to sit at a bigger table as you bring more of your children into view. And may we be curious about them so that we might see your face from a new perspective. Bless those who need your healing presence this day, healing for body, mind, emotions, and spirit. Bless those who are beginning life today and those whose lives are ending. We ask you to be with those in transition and those who need a boost to make a new start. And we pray that your presence through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit will remain with us as we seek your will. And let us pray together the prayer that you've taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we go into the world, let us offer a sincere be our guest and come into the house of God where you may know the love grace and mercy of Jesus Christ, and come to know the joy of being a child of God. Go in peace. Amen.